All right, gang, hello. So one of the things I wanted to look at today was balancing the phase inverter. So the amp is done, as you know. I've been playing with the controls a little bit here. This is the, uh, these three are the tone stack which I've been playing with. Um, and, but then this pot right here is the, uh, the basically the tone stack, I'm sorry, is the phase inverter balancer. I also have been playing with this pot a little bit. This one is the uh, adjustment for the drive, just trying to find where I like the drive. I've kind of set the drive volume and uh, drive levels to maximum, then dial that to where I think it's not too gritty and nasty at its highest level, where it really gets the level I like, and leaving it there, and then being able to dial it down from there. But if I go higher, it starts getting, to me, not so pleasant sounding. So I found that as a good spot. But for this, we're going to look. If you can see right now, I've got the oscilloscope set. I'm trying to get that at an angle where it's a little bit viewable, but uh, where you can kind of see the blue and the yellow lines. The yellow line is a little below the blue one. Uh, and if I adjust the position of blue uh, to where it lines up on one side, it doesn't quite on the other, but I've inverted it. I've got invert on on the scope so that they're, because normally if invert is off, they would be out of phase because they're, you know, phase inverted. Uh, and those are just mirror images of each other flipped by the way the phase inverter works. But I wanted to kind of look, and I think I've showed this before, so you can invert the image and see them, uh, and this is just right at the phase inverter output, that they're just slightly off. Now, of course I can dial it at that point and get it to where there's overlapping as much as possible, but there's another way I wanted to show off as well. So obviously I can go in here right now, and you can, if that's visible, you can see there's just a slight offset of the yellow. So I could try and dial this one way or another until they become identical. I'm gonna try and adjust this up a teeny bit. So right there, although they have a slight phase shift because you can see that one is a little bit leading on the other one, they are now exactly the same and, de and dead balanced. Uh, but what I wanted to show you is most scopes, most scopes also have a math function. And if you go to the math function, you'll be able to do operators like A plus B and A minus B. Uh, right now it's on A plus B, but it's off. If I turn that on, it will, we, what we need to do, oh actually you can see there's a, a thing there that's very large. Because I have an A plus B and I have the image inverted, they're adding two big things together. But let me, so let me adjust the scale bigger so it shows up. So now the two of them together add up to being, that's the 100 volt scale. And that's, uh, I think these were, um, I'm trying to remember what the, oh, uh, we're at about a 20 volt scale. So if I go to 20 volt scale, you'll see that's how much bigger those two added together are uh, in theory. So that's one way you can uh, do this is if you don't invert it, you can use A minus B, but if you do invert it, or I'm sorry, I said that backwards. If you take the two images as they are and don't invert them, you can do A plus B because you're adding a positive to a negative that's still addition or that's, that's actually subtraction. But in this case, I'm adding a negative uh, or a reverse image of that one. So they're both the same and adding them together, that's, you know, big image plus big image equals bigger image, if you will. So, so we're gonna change the operator though, in this case, to be a minus B. And if you look, now there's this very tiny, and if I have to zoom in to where you actually see that it exists, I'm down to 10 volts there. So at five volt scale, you can almost see that it's bouncing between a, a, an area enough that I would say that we are, um, whoops. What do I do? I dial the offset. I don't want an offset. So now you can see there, there's just the slightest of curve going on. At the 5 volt scale, it's so little, it doesn't even cover a graticule, so it's probably, you know, a few volts, maybe. Uh, and of course, you're never going to get them absolutely perfect unless you have a very well-balanced phase inverter. But if I had to dial this one way or another, you'll see that growing, and it's much bigger right now at the far right side. And if I grow far left, it gets small, 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 but doesn't completely disappear. Uh, so that is another way that you can use the math function of this to try and balance out your phase inverter. So uh, hopefully that makes sense. Again, if you don't have an absolutely perfectly balanced phase inverter, it's not the end of the world for guitar amps because actually you want a bit of imbalance. Uh, there's another operator called FFT that not all scopes will have. Mine does. It stands for Fast Fourier Transform. And I'm inputting a signal that is um, one kilohertz. So um, the the um this first dimple is kind of at the at the primary i think i believe that would generally just be the one kilohertz but i have no bumps here that's because i have it so balanced uh, nothing showing up i think but again the, the fft on this might not be the most amazing because it takes a long time for it to kind of sum up changes but if you start dialing this one way or another you should start seeing peaks of different kinds 
and I'm not really seeing a lot. Although I think it's possible I don't have the, the oh, I have the center of 14 kilohertz. That might be why. Let's get the center down. I'm trying to figure out, I haven't played with this a whole lot. Um, oh, it says source is just channel two. I can't actually look at, interesting. Doesn't look like I can actually look at both. I haven't played with this a lot, but um, that's just showing the output of the one, not the other. So that won't show me the, I would almost need to put this on the output of the amp in fast Fourier transform mode to do it. And I had, again, I've not played with the FFT a lot, but effectively you need to dial in the right parameters here. And I don't know enough about all of these. I think the center is just a point in the middle of the scope. So it'd be left and right is equal to the um, maximum range of the scope, honestly, I think. So the, in this case, the scope's got, a, I think it's a 40 megahertz or 20, 50 megahertz bandwidth. So it's only got 50 megahertz, but it would cover the range uh, of 50 megahertz. Uh, but you know, you want to put on the output instead and dial that back and forth. So I'm going to switch back though for my operator to a minus B, so we can see again, and I'm going to dial that down to the lowest I can see. I want my scale to be so it's fairly visible. So there's a two volts that makes it as really, really, really big, and I can see which way it goes. So this to me also says that if I dial it all the way up to the right, I have a pretty big signal, and if I dial all the way to the left, it's almost gone there's a few but you know so to me that says though that the difference here if you sh look I also said it was shifted phase shifted just a teeny bit and that may just be something due to some of the tone stacking and whatnot coming in that the um, around it you know sh phase shifting happens when the signal time wise slides one way or the other uh, so that's the, not the same thing as phase inversion which the phase inversion job is just taking a, sig a signal and turning it upside down you know so in this case, I think that's more attributed to the phase shifting because you can see it's only existing over on the sides. But if I do dial it out of out of balance, it does get really big, and it seems much more pr prominently as a problem with the obvious differences. And you can see them right here as well, where there's a big gap right now. So I'm going to dial it down back to where I like to see it visually just being about the same size, as far left as I can go. And if I wanted to, you know, tube roll a bit and get some different tubes in there, I could maybe find one that was more balanced that would get better. But to me, that looks pretty darn close. I do not see a massive difference there. So I'm going to go ahead and turn math off. Uh, and I will go to channel one. I'm going to, oops, I turned it off. I'm going to make this scale just be a teeny bit bigger. It's going to kind of partly go off screen. So what I'm going to do on purpose, though, is I want it to be about as big as possible. I'm going to line up the top here. And I want to see, if I look right at the top right there, and I see my position, if you look, the position is saying, those are pretty lined up, and it says position is, oh, now it won't show me the position. Oh, I'm using the wrong one. Position is at negative 1.2 volts. And then if I, oops, I turned it off again. So then if I wiggle that around a little bit, oh, I'm doing the wrong one again. It, it's saying negative 3 volts. So there's a, a slight difference there as well that you can see in DC shift. Um, that's interesting. But if I slide this down, oops, I want to crank that up. Let me slide this up. So it's at positive five volts as the center line of this right now. But I wanted to see the bottom, and then I switched to channel two and do the same thing. It's a little higher, positive 8.2 volts to line those two up. So again, I don't know how great that is, but because I'd like to have a slightly bigger screen to just see how big that gets, but we're going to have to just decrease them slightly. Um, I wonder if there's a, oh, there's a course and a fine. Let me do fine. Make this as big as possible on fine. And we'll just set them both to the same setting. So that's about almost full screen, 12, 11.6 volts. So let me switch to channel one, put it to fine. We'll get it to 11.6 volts. All right, so now they're equal. And I'm going to just try and line them up. And you can see with as much visible there again you can see the blue one doesn't quite get to the top or the bottom so there's just a slight phase imbalance right now and as i've seen, said there's this slight shift where you can see the yellow a little bit to the right side of the blue now that uh, again is 
more related to things like the coupling capacitors. Some of these, because there's a difference in them, uh, I think there is a difference. One of them usually tends to be a little bit larger than the other. That causes a very slight time shift, I believe, to the, to the two signals. Um, if anybody knows uh, that I'm really wrong on that, please let me know. But so, um, okay, so there you have it. This phase inverter for me in this case, for this tube has to be dialed all the way to the left and it's not perfect, but it's closely balanced. So uh, we'll go ahead and we're gonna get a demo of this as well shortly, um, but I wanted to basically have this as a separate video. It's not just on this amp so that people can get a, an idea of what that's like. And I know I did another one for the previous video, but I can't remember if I did it as part of the video series or separate. And I want this one to be separate so that it's just, if people search for phase inverter balancing, they'll be able to find it. So. All right, gang, there you have it. If you like this video, please give me a like, a subscribe, and a thumbs up. And uh, tell me what else sounds like a good thing for you to find out about and things that I can show off for you to, to learn about. Thanks. Cheers.